guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week, and this is the show where I review all the comics I've read this week in one show. We go least favorite to best pick of the week and everything in between. So let's get started. Of course, at the end of the video, we talk about the viewer's pick of the week, so in the comments below, let me know what your pick of the week was. I had about nine books this week, so a kind of smaller haul for the week. I actually got a book that I was planning on dropping and then ended up getting it, and that's actually number nine. And that is Fantastic Four, issue five. And was gonna drop this one. I didn't love the first issue, first four issues and thought I gave it enough of a try. And then I said, all right, you know, I'm getting eight books and I had this book in my pull still. So I was like, all right, let me let me get this one. And honestly, I was a bit disappointed once again. I, I like that the Fantastic Four were working together. I enjoy that they're they're finally together in general. But the, the actual story, I mean, there there's a part in here where it's them going to the bathroom, and I'm like, okay, I, I kind of get the humor of that. I, I kind of get, you know, maybe the twists of, of what a villain will do and, and how that's affecting their body and how they won't be able to eat, but I, I didn't really love reading that, uh, so I just didn't I didn't really like the direction. Even though I, I enjoy the characters, I enjoy the art, uh, I just don't love the plot for this one. So overall, giving that two and a half stars, and that is number nine. Moving on to number eight, a book I thought was going to be a lot higher, and that is X-23 Deadly Regenesis. I love X-23. I, I'm a big fan of hers, and I was happy to see that she's getting her own miniseries. But what I've been seeing with a lot of these Marvel miniseries in general is that there's not much of a progression to these characters, especially the female characters with miniseries. Uh, you know, a, a great example of that is Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel has had a lot of miniseries that hasn't really seen the character grow, but you have, like, this fun plot that maybe if you never read Miss Marvel, you, you would un understand who the character is. And, and same thing for Spider-Gwen. And now we're getting that with X-23, where this is definitely a rehash of who is X-23. This is what she's been through. Now she has people in her past that are going to fight her, and she has to deal with that. And, and honestly, that's every X-23 story. I don't think it really presents anything new here. So it, it feels more for a new reader than someone who has been enjoying X-23 in the past, where you're like, I want to see a new story with Laura. We've seen Laura go through this before and, and deal with this arc. Why are we going back to deal with that arc? And I thought the artwork was just okay. There's a lot of thin lines going on here. So overall, giving that two and a half stars. I wanted to like this one more than I did. I will give issue two a, another shot. Maybe we'll see the plot progress in a, in a different direction. But, uh, you know, again, I thought this was a little bit more towards new readers. So moving on to number seven, which is Rogue Sun, issue 11. And this is definitely more mythos based. We, we get a lot with Rogue Sun in general, but the stuff I really liked was the grounded elements of this story where we get to see prom. You know, we get to see these characters that our, our main character is kind of friendly with, I wouldn't call them friends, and how these two worlds collide in the end. And that's really what made me enjoy this issue was the cliffhanger. I was like, oh man, I'm excited to see, like, I, I, I'm a sucker for those type of stories where the, again, the superhero and the civilian life collide. And I was like, all right, how is this going to affect our, our main character's life? So I, I enjoyed that. I do think the mythology stuff was a little slow and a little expositionary, but I liked the uniqueness of turning over the comic book. I, I always like some innovation there. Uh, and the art's pretty solid for the book too, uh, especially the contrasting again of this double life. So overall giving that three stars and that is number seven. Moving on to num number six and that is Batman issue 133. I, I can't say I love this world, this multiverse, but I'm, I'm enjoying the ride of where Batman's being taken. Right, you know, we, we've seen this world before, a little bit of a warped version of how if Bruce Wayne wasn't alive, you know, Flashpoint was pretty much that. Uh, but this time there's no Thomas Wayne either, there's, there's none of that, so it's like, all right, what is what is Gotham uh, with that? And there's a lot of more like super powered characters because of it, which I thought was, was cool to see. And honestly, what I've been really enjoying is the backup story. I've really been enjoying Tim Drake and him trying to look for Batman, him going to different multiverses, I've enjoyed that. The artwork is pretty solid too. Uh, nothing too mind blowing for a new multiverse. It kind of looks like your average Gotham. So, you know, this is a middle of the road arc for me, but I'm curious to see where it ends up going. So three stars for me, and that is number six. Moving on to number five, which is the Flash issue 794. I've been really liking this arc. I feel like it it doesn't reinvent the wheel. It's not giving us some crazy revelations about the Flash, but it's the Flash family working together. 
things happen like Iris's death and and uh, Wally's disappearance and you're like all right how are we gonna save them and the family tries figuring it out we get some emotional moments with Irie figuring out that her dad is gone possibly dead and again as a team they're they're gonna solve that that case and I liked it I thought it was good is it Again, reinventing the wheel, no, but sometimes I don't think an event has to. I think it just has to have the emotional beats that matter. And and this event has done that well with really, you know, nice cartoony artwork that is fit with the past versions of Flash. So giving that three and a half stars, and that is number five. Moving on to number four, which is Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, issue two. I thought this really picked up. I enjoyed the world they're building here. I like they're building an ensemble. This feels like a unique world, a unique hero, where she's just trying to figure herself out. Is she a vampire? Is she not? And and she wants to trust this potential friend who's kind of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer type character and she ends up betraying her which I thought was a nice twist in the end and then also you get Blade in the end of this issue or only in issue two we already get Blade so I think it's moving the plot well enough it's introducing us to this world the artwork I think could be stronger at times I think the the colors get a little muddy and I, I want it to look a little bit more exciting but overall I think this is a, a a cool potential series for a new character here. So overall giving that three and a half stars and that is number four. Moving on to number three, this is the highest Spider-Man has been in a while and as the Amazing Spider-Man issue 21. I, I, I liked that we got a little bit more information and this is the title of the video as well. We are learning who this antagonist is of who created the rift be between MJ and, and Peter Parker. And he's actually a character that is in a previous Amazing Spider-Man book like 20 years ago, literally more than 20 years ago. He showed up for like an arc, uh, Benjamin, and he's this kind of ice creature who is part of like this Mayan situation going on, but also he's related to alternate realities, which makes sense with the kids and, and the possible direction this book can go. So I liked, honestly, that they picked a character that wasn't the Green Goblin or Harry, but also not a new character where it's like, oh, we have to reinvent a new character and we're not going to do anything with them. I like that this is someone, you know, maybe you might remember if you if you have a, a photographic memory of this character or you recently read this story and then we get to follow his journey a little bit. So I like that. I will say I'm a little jaded because we're on issue 21 and I'm like, man, I wish this is issue three. I'm still nervous to see what this is going to be about and how slow that progression will be. But luckily, Amazing Spider-Man does come out twice a month, so maybe we won't have to wait as long as other titles to figure out what's going on here. I, I think it has potential. I, I feel like this character feels different. I, I hope we get answers to this and find out what this big shocking moment is. But I think it builds up the moment pretty well. And, you know, my only nitpick is the artwork. I'm not a big fan of John Romita Jr.'s art, and I don't think this is the strongest suit here especially the kids they're they had really big heads here so the artwork wasn't my favorite but I do think this arc has potential and I'll definitely keep an open mind on it so giving that three and a half stars and that is number three moving on to number two which is the adventures of superman john kent issue one i enjoyed this issue i was kind of falling off that last superman series i didn't really feel like i had much of direction I, even though i wanted to enjoy it i wanted to enjoy john kent's character i just didn't really know where it was going and i feel like this issue fixes that a little bit where there's definitely a plot there's definitely a, a a mode of transportation where in the middle of this issue again got a little worried it was uh john just kind of going to all these different places in the world and trying to help people as possibly the this new ability is also ingraining in him and then he goes to different multiverses and we get to see some iconic superman superman multiverse characters especially in the wheelhouse of tom taylor we get to see val zod Lois Lane as Red Tornado, if you remember her from or two. And I, I like that. I like the buildup of that. I enjoyed the direction of, okay, Clark dies in this universe and that's going to affect all these other universes. And I thought it explained that plot very easily. Love the Red Tornado reveal because obviously Earth 2 is a long time ago. So maybe not everyone has read that that book. And so that's shocking for newer readers. And I, I really enjoyed that character from Tom Taylor's run. And the artwork is just really crisp. It's clean. Again, I, I just think it's 
it's a good issue one. It, it's a good start for this book. And I'm excited to see how that plot unravels and, and how they introduce these characters. I know Injustice Gods Among Us is supposed to be involved in this as well. So giving that four stars and that is number two. Moving on to number one, which is Mary Jane and Black Cat, issue four. I love this book. I wish this was an ongoing title. I just love the, the character work that's done here. There's no secrets. I mean, there was the secret of Black Cat keeping that she's in a relationship with Peter, but we as an audience member know that. It really has to do with just these characters and, and their interpersonal relationships as they are stuck in limbo. And uh, I just I just love how Mary Jane and, and Black Cat interact. And I like that, yes, the plot has to do with Peter, but it really truly is just about their friendship and, and how that moves the narrative, even moves some of the action for this issue as well as Mary Jane gets the ultimate jackpot of, of a power and it's just really fun and I am upset that it's ending like I, I wish we had more but Jen McKay just knows Black Cat really well obviously knows this dynamic well and it's just good character work I, I really enjoy it the art's fun for this one as well some like I said really good action that ties into that story so overall giving that four and a half stars uh, easy pick of the week for me and I, I want to see more from this that's 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 all I could say about it. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite comic of the week. And you have a chance to be featured on, on the episode. Last week, uh, pick of the week was Batman vs. Robin. And here are some comments about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno. And I'll see you guys in the next one.